Hey guys, this is Rob Kings with GoldSilverPros.com. It is Sunday, the 19th of September, 2021. This presentation will get to you in a few days after we get it uploaded to the server and ready to go. I wanted to continue the discussion we had last week about the gold trade moving. If you guys have been watching my Basel videos, you know that one of the reasons I think for Basel III was to pull the gold trade out of London. It was to get rid of that derivatives market and establish a new derivatives market while at the same time allowing gold to revalue. And I think that's going on. We saw last week, I discussed gold trade possibly coming to Texas along with the new commodities markets just outside of Austin, as well as potentially the NASDAQ and some of the other stock exchanges. We also saw how Tennessee passed a resolution 32 to zero in their Senate to discuss getting a gold depository as well, much like Texas has. So I think what we're starting to see is some of that gold flow and the, the markets in the United States move south. Now there could be a reason for that. I won't speculate on that right now. The purpose of this video is to talk about China. One of the things I said in the Basel three videos was I believe that a lot of the gold trade would move from London to China and maybe some other centers as well. Well, I've got some more information on how China is increasing its derivatives markets and including the precious metals markets and who's a big player in that, which should surprise no one when we get into it. So without further ado, here's the presentation. I'll go ahead and put this up on screen and it's entitled Big Changes in China's Markets and Examination of the Rising Gold Power. Here we have an article from Reuters uh, about 15, 16 days ago on September 3rd, China to draw foreign investors into commodities future trading. So what China is doing is they're establishing a derivative market, uh, a renminbi or a yuan based derivative market in China to allow people to trade. So whereas you've seen it mostly in the West and the West dominated markets, now we're going to be see, seeing this occur. We're going to see this occur in Asia and in China specifically. So don't be surprised if China draws a lot of business into its local jurisdiction for the derivatives markets, as well as for uh, gold and silver and more gold flowing into the Shanghai index. It says here, China will launch more futures contracts, including a shipping futures contract and accelerate efforts to bring in more overseas investors to trade its futures market, the state council or cabinet said on Friday. So we move to another article and all of the article links are in the end of this presentation. We'll publish the presentation for you as well. So I'm not going to put the article links here on the screen because it just uh, messes up uh, and doesn't give us enough room to look at the actual excerpt. But you can look at, at the back end of this presentation and they'll all be there. So here again, reporting from Reuters, China will launch more futures contracts, including a shipping futures contract. Now think about the ramifications of that. The shipping uh, industry is experiencing a a lack of shipping containers and it's getting more expensive to ship things all at the same time that China is launching a shipping futures contract that could be uh, anticipated or interpreted to mean that they're wanting more control over shipping futures costs as they expel the Belt and Road Initiative between all those other countries that they're doing business with and allow them to have more control um, over the prices and regulate that market a little bit more. It's also to accelerate efforts to bring in more overseas investors to trade its futures market, the state council said on Friday. China will also establish an international yuan-denominated commodity futures market. It said in a statement on promoting trade and investment in its free trade zones. So all commodities, including the gold and the silver, precious metals are in there, but they're doing it across the commodities complex. Why would they do that? Because the West, Western nations have control of those derivatives trading markets for the most part. This would allow them to have control over how those are traded and also potentially have control over some prices. As we saw uh, the regulator in the US, the CFTC controlling uh, silver prices, Ross and Benham admitting that this will allow China maybe to set some limits, downside and upside on some of the commodities as well. It says here, the cabinet announcement comes amid China's increasing efforts to become a global commodities pricing power with the country gradually opening up more commodities derivative contracts to overseas participants for trading. Foreign companies and investors currently have limited access to China's vast commodities markets. Contracts that are open to foreign traders include crude oil, iron ore, rubber, low sulfur fuel, and bonnet copper. So China's had some commodities markets and they do trade, but they're opening up to the broader commodities complex. And I believe this has to do not only with uh, NSFR requirements of Basel III, but all of the other regulations coming in the commodities markets as well. And the anticipation that if the commodities markets in the West fail, China will be there to pick up the slack or if they start to experience a lot of problems in the upcoming financial uh, collapse or financial reset, if you will, that China will pick up a lot of that slack and become a world trading center. It makes sense with their Belt and Road Initiative. They're designing all these trade routes. So that's the flow of, makes sense to, to have control of the derivatives markets as well and how these things are priced 
as they come into and out of China. It makes perfect sense. China will accelerate the introduction of overseas traders, build an international commodities futures trading market priced and sell it in renminbi, and develop widely represented futures prices that domestic and foreign traders will recognize and participate in. We'll talk about one of the, the banks that's getting involved in this. It'll be no surprise to any of you. Another one from FX Street, China to establish international yuan denominated commodities futures market. Uh, the additional takeaways will accelerate and bring overseas investors and domestic futures trading. We'll launch more futures contracts, including shipping futures, and we'll launch pilot schemes for intellectual, intellectual properties rights securitization. Intellectual property rights securitization. That means that China wants to have control of some of the intellectual property rights related to commodities exchanges. That's interesting right there. All right, another article, uh, the China Securities Regulatory Commission, the CSRC, the country's top securities regulator, said Friday it will further expand the scope of specific futures varieties, enhance the participation of overseas traders, and support overseas financial institutions in controlling or holding a stake in domestic futures firms. The top securities regulator in June granted approval allowing JP Morgan Futures Co. Limited to become the country's first wholly foreign-owned futures trading firm. Does it surprise anybody that JP Morgan's first act? I've been saying this over and over. The global banks and the global institutions, they're international. They, will, they were set up originally through the Western system, but they're not beholden to the Western system. As China rises and as China and Russia and India and some of the BRIC nations become more powerful, as a Belt and Road Initiative gets built, that is the next stage of development in the world. That is going to be the center of commerce in the world. Going over those Belt and Road uh, road trade routes and into the Chinese derivative market, the banks are smart. They're going to move over to who is leading the charge in the world. They will jump from nation state to nation state. I've said this over and over again. This marks the 30th anniversary of the launch of China's futures market, which has developed quickly in recent years. So China's had a futures market, very limited scope, but the last few years they've really expanded it and they're learning from the West and they're wanting to take some control of that futures trading. Again, as they facilitate on their Belt and Road Initiative with these other countries, the trade of actual goods. They want to facilitate at the next level, the trade of the derivatives and monitor the trade of that derivatives so that they can have control, so that they can protect those markets, so they can facilitate it. Then you can also have some control over the prices if they don't like them, honestly, because any regular that does that has that much power, does have some pricing control power dependent upon the policies that they implement as far as the markets go. And we've seen that with gold and silver and some of the other commodities on the, on the chain, the, excuse me, the, exchanges in the West. Okay, finishing up this article. At the end of November, funds in China future market had exceeded 855 billion yuan, up 55.2% on the year, CSRC data showed. Meanwhile, the turnover in China's futures market reached 382.5 trillion yuan from January to November, to November up 45.5%. The commodities futures available to international investors has been operating smoothly, such as crude oil and iron ore. So they tested it with energy and iron. What is what is crucial to China's development as a nation? Energy and building materials like iron. They use so much iron in their building. So they started there. Why did they start there? They wanted to facilitate trade, but they also want to have some control over the actual commodities because if it's traded on their exchange and stored in depositories supporting their exchange, they're going to have more readily available access to it as a country. The regular is establishing the exchange so the participants will have ready access to these to take upon delivery, not just to trade the derivatives contracts, which is important to the price and the volume, uh, or the volume of trades there, which affects the price and the direction, but also to the physical commodities as well. Because remember, China likes to include a lot of physical commodities. The Shanghai Gold Exchange has a lot of physical gold trade. Another article, according to Shanghai International Energy Exchange, a unit of Shanghai Futures Exchange, it has registered 52 overseas agencies, mainly from Hong Kong, Singapore, Britain, the Republic of Korea and Japan, which serve customers from Britain, Australia, Switzerland, Singapore, Cyprus, Seychelles, as well as Hong Kong and Taiwan. So Britain's getting into the act, even though they have their own derivatives market, because they see the writing on the wall and they're going to jump in and participate. They know China's going to rise as a superpower. They know that they're going to develop these exchanges. They know they have the Belt and Road Initiative. They're trying to get involved in the financing part of it. Down at the bottom, Rochelle Wei, CEO of JP Morgan Futures Co. Limited, said, as China continues to open up its futures market and launch new varieties of products, the country's market will play a more important role in the world market and more overseas will investor, investors will join in. There you go. Statement from JP Morgan. So here are the references to uh, what we had 
in the presentation, uh, China to draw foreign investors in commodities from Reuters, an FX Street article, and three articles from Chinese newspapers as well to round out the overall presentation. So I wanted to give that to you guys so you had that and understanding what's going on in China. What we surmised and figured out over this last eight or nine months by looking at Basel III, by looking actually the last three years at the Belt and Road Initiative and other moves that China is making is China is becoming front and center stage in the international finance market, the commodities market, the trade market, a lot of markets. And you have a lot of countries participating. You have JP Morgan jumping in there first as a big a mega global bank. You'll see other mega global banks there as well. Uh, you'll have the, the domestic Chinese banks in there as well. So China, the, the shift in finance and commerce and commodities is shifting over to China in their Belt and Road Initiative, which again will connect 73% of uh, global GDP together by the time it's all said and done. And all of these loans that China is issuing for the Belt and Road Initiative are coming in yuan. They're yuan denominated. They're not dollar denominated. This is not the petrodollar, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Chinese system being built right in front of your eyes. And this is going to be the replacement for the petrodollar because it's the biggest and the strongest, the most aggressive. And China being first mover and having their hands in it and setting up all these exchanges and giving out the loans and establishing these relationships with all these other countries along the way has put it at the forefront. I don't see anybody challenging them right now. I don't think anybody wants to break out of it. When you have London basically capitulating and going into that market because they see the writing on the wall, that's because they understand they have to be a player there. They're going to lose their place in the world, right? So even preparations from London, who has derivative market, one of the big Western financial centers, they're getting involved. And one, one of the other things that London wants to do is get involved in the banking there as well. There's an article I reported on last year, I believe. It's either at the very end of last year or the beginning of this year in one of my videos where I talked about the, the uh, UK banks getting involved in some of those deals that the Chinese are having for its Belt and Road Initiative. So London, the UK has been involved, that banking sector has been involved for quite some time. So they see the writing on the wall, even though they have their own derivatives markets, they know that China's rising as a power and they wanna be involved in that. The question is, will America get involved or will our markets eventually fail or just maybe be challenged for supremacy by the Chinese uh, as the system's replaced? A lot of that has to do with the dollar and how sound the dollar is. now. What about the global economy? If you guys are my subscribers, I'm going to be talking about the Evergrande situation. I'm not going to talk about it on the YouTube channel, but I'll give a good breakdown of the Evergrande situation and what it means for uh, the global financial reset and the health of the dollar as well as the yuan, the maybe so on and so forth on the global stage. So if you want that, we will be having a special sign up for that about midweek. We'll be announcing it midweek, maybe by the time this video is out a special subscription, you can get access to, access to that subscriber content. I will say, and I said on Liberty and Finance Channel last week when I was on with Steve Penny and Elijah, they asked me about Evergrande. I said, you know what? It doesn't surprise me. The Chinese bailed out the state-owned entities last year and who was loaning the state-owned entities? A lot of Chinese banks. So Evergrande is just a symptom of the problems in the Chinese economy and in their debt system. Every nation, regardless of the fact that China's building the Belt and Road Initiative and doing the derivatives markets, we all, they all have banking issues. And one of the articles I'll point out to my subscribers has to do with who's going to be affected by the Chinese problems. And I'll give you a hint, it's systemic across the world. And I'll leave it there. This has been the update for today, guys. Remember 17th, September 19th, 2021, this has been the update on what's going on with the gold and derivatives market and commodities market trading in China. Connecting that with the Belt and Road Initiative, connecting that with China's rising power, connecting that with Basel III. Now we're starting to see all of the pieces fall into place that we've been talking about for the last calendar year. And it's starting to become more obvious what's, what's happening in the global financial reset. And the reset's not going to be a, a light on, light off moment where you just push a button or flip a switch and immediately we have a reset. The reset is going on right now because it takes years and years to set all these things up. Remember, China has had... 30 years of derivatives markets trading in limited like iron ore and oil. Now they're expanding it. So doing on building all of these things and getting credibility in the world takes time. So the financial reset, there have been seeds planted 30, 40, 50 years ago. I'm sure there were seeds planted back when the dollar first started in 1913, the eventual rise of a, a different system. Cause you know, that system had to fail. I've reported on that before. And the architects of that system knew it had to fail. And now we're just in a stage where we're building the infrastructure for the new system. It's coming into place and all of the things that are going to happen. We'll be covering that on the channel as we go along. Um, I think I predicted a lot of this stuff and I'm catching on to a lot of it as it comes maybe sooner than some other people potentially. So stay tuned to the channel as I continue to give you more updates on that.
Till next time, guys, this is Rob Keynes at Gold Silver. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications and go to goldsilverpost.com and sign up for the free newsletter so you can get your updates.